Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today, oh, this is heavy. We got a little Moschino moment happening. Isn't this a cutie? From the Barbie Collection 2015, but what's inside? I got a chunk of bubble gum stuck in this bag and I'm gonna have to peel it off together with you and then we're gonna review the bubble gum. Yes, it's a perfume. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push the notification bell to get notified every time I post a new perfume video. You can also follow me on Patreon. Join me there for extra perks. Super Jacob, all spelled together. I live stream every Saturday, so uh, you're all welcome to join me in my live streams on my main Super Jacob channel. That's where I film these videos, and this video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. My co-reviewers are with me. Hi, everybody in the chats. Listen, let's open this baby up. This is from the Moschino Jeremy Scott for Moschino Barbie collection from spring summer 2015. Uh, I want to say 2025. It's not 2025 yet, you guys, but it will be in the future. So we got this gorgeous Moschino Barbie bag that also Paris Hilton wore when the bag was launched. She was threatened the smaller version and the bigger version of this bag back in 2015. I'm wearing also Jeremy Scott for Adidas. All Pink, fantastic bubblegum moment attire. The hoodie is Jeremy Scott for Adidas, also from 2015. And I have the Moschino <clears throat> X Barbie collection, also by Jeremy Scott. The oversized Barbie necklace, uh, you know, to be worn by adults that are still kids at heart. So let's open this baby up. Oh my gosh, what's inside here? Oh my God, I can't believe it, y'all. I got a perfume in the bag. <laughs> such a moment, such a buildup. Listen, it's an iconic moment. Why not give it to, to Jeremy and the, the, the team for the effort of creating such a whimsical fragrance? Check it out, y'all. Moschino Toy 2 Bubblegum. Now, right off the bat, I want to say Toy 2 sounds so stupid. Just call it Bubblegum. Don't call it Toy 2. It's ridiculous. Just call it Moschino Bubblegum. I know that they did the teddy bear in glass and, you know, still my favorite teddy bear is the plushy one. <clears throat> you can also check out my review of that one. I reviewed it as it came out back in 2014. But now we're going to review the bubblegum version. It's fantastic pink. If I could, if I did have the rights to play a song right now, it would be uh, Aqua's uh, Barbie Girl. You know, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. It's fantastic, blah, 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 life in plastic. So you open it up. Cha Oof, okay, it's intense. Um, it's <laughs> I've been testing it out, so it's kind of, you know, it has a smell. So we do have a teddy, sorry, bottle. Let's just Bottle, teddy bear, pink frosted and pink glossy, silver text. I would have preferred gold on pink, but just like the Barbie bag, they also did silver on pink. I prefer, I much prefer gold on pink, but it is what it is. And you can chop his head off, little plastic pink head, and then you got the silver sprayer to spray away. This is 100 mil. They also do 50 mil, 30 mil. I got the 100 mil. It's not that expensive. I got it kind of on a, I got it for a good deal around 60 bucks or 50 bucks. So the sprayer, the atomizer, darling, check it out. It kind of just flows. And honey, bubblegum is the name. Bubblegum is the game. Bubblegum does not deliver fame, but it's not tame. <laughs> it's also not lame. It stimulates the brain. Now that's an imperfect rhyme, but it still is a rhyme. <clears throat> Released in 2021, a bubblegum toy two by Moschino is a floral fruity fragrance, so their website says. Um, they say it's for women, but as we know, <laughs> perfume knows no gender. Olivier Pechot is the nose behind this one. It smells cheap, but then again, from Moschino, we're used to kind of this whimsical cheapness. It's kind of a cool thing. Um, it does smell like hubba bubba bubble gum right off the bat. When you first spray it or out of the bottle, it gives you immediate sensation of that pink bubble gum. <clears throat> Interestingly enough, it behaves like the real bubble gum. Um, because hold on, yeah. 
Because when you put the bubble gum in your mouth, you have that flavor of the bubble gum. It lasts like three seconds and then it's gone. And then you get that kind of pulp, pulpy, sugary type of aftertaste. And the chewing gum loses that initial powdery because the bubble gum is kind of covered with that kind of powdery thing to, to separate it from each other so that it doesn't stick to things. And um, and that kind of flavor goes away after a couple of seconds, right? Same happens here. The bubble gum, the first blast of pink hubba bubba bubble gum is gone. But what we have left? Top notes, candied fruits, bitter orange, lemon, middle notes. Well, they call middle notes bubble gum, but right off the bat, you smell the bubble gum. <clears throat> Bulgarian rose, blueberry, peach, cinnamon, peach blossom, and ginger. Base notes, musk, ambroxan, and cedar. Ambroxan, not a fan of it. But then again, almost everybody's using it, especially in cheaper fragrances. Also more expensive fragrances, but then again, <laughs> you get Sauvage if you want a more expensive ambroxan. You know, to each their own. Um... Pesho is the guy who uh, created One Million. Um, just saying. <laughs> he Let's just say he's been doing uh, some perfumes that are highly popular, highly famous, but he's also been doing trash. Sorry, Pesho. It is what it is. But, now, this is trash too. <laughs> toy too, trash too. Now this is also trash, but it's trash in a good way, I want to say, because it delivers it's it's extra. Um it this doesn't try to be fancy. This doesn't try to be a bestseller. You know, literally the package. Look at the font they used to 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 spell bubblegum. You see what I mean? They they kind of that font is it's tacky. The bubblegum font. The Moschino font is super elegant. I mean, but the Moschino font was developed in the 80s. So that's a different uh, constellation altogether. But the bubblegum font is like, you know, but that's okay. And you know what? That's okay. We love a Jeremy Scott trashy moment because that sort of, you know, keech Americana vibe is something typical to him. And I think with bubblegum, they delivered a beautiful perfume that resembles a dream, like a vision of wanting to be innocent, um, teeny vibes, uh, carefree vibes, you know, spending your entire afternoons in your bedroom after school, uh, you know, looking through magazines. Well, nowadays, I guess you would just be scrolling through the internet, but this kind of makes you reminisce of the days before internet when you would be sitting in your, you know, your teeny bedroom and you're going through your pop magazine, reading about your latest musical stars, um, musicians, pop singers, movies, TV shows. And then you're thinking of going to the mall with your friends or to the movies on the weekend. And it's just a carefree life. The parents are paying the taxes and the bills and the food. You just got to go to school, hang out with your friends and, you know, chill and listen to music while you're at home, you know, in the afternoons. And then on the weekends, you go and watch a scary movie together, eat a bunch of popcorn. The good old carefree life, hanging out at the mall together, eating ice cream, chewing that bubble gum all day long. It makes you dream, this perfume. It makes you go there. It literally makes you go there. And some of you have been saying in the chat, oh, it sounds like it's very sweet. Cyber Coco says, sounds very sweet. Well, here's the plot twist. You might think from all the ingredients that this thing is like super sweet and obnoxious and gourmand. Well, actually, it's not. Yes, it is sweet. But for the ingredients that are listed in here, you would think, oh my gosh, this is going to give me cavities just from smelling it just from wearing it a whole day i'm gonna to have to go to the dentist because the teeth are gonna rot <laughs> no and that's not the case it's actually quite elegant within a trashy context why am i saying this because the bulgarian rose blueberry peach peach blossom ginger cinnamon i also the candied fruits none of them are overly sweet i also smell some jasmine in here well, the, 
it 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 it's very tame. After that bubblegum blast subsides, you get this delicate rose, slightly candied, never too sugary. She stays elegant. It's a perfume that rarely, unlike other sweet gourmands, this one manages to not overpower. It stays close to your skin. It does project, but it's not an annoying fragrance. It's a it's a it's a very beautiful floral, slightly candied rose. Um, does it smell synthetic? Yeah, it does. Euro Italia produced it. Euro Italia has been making Moschino perfumes from day one, uh, since they started their perfume uh, journey. Since Moschino, while Franco Moschino was still alive, and Euro Italia to this day still produces Moschino fragrances. Um, but however, Euro Italia has done some masterpieces in the in the past. Euro Italia produced Dolce Gabbana's first two perfumes, the Dolce Gabbana pour femme and the Dolce Gabbana pour homme, which have been you know reformulated, and then other uh, manufacturers started producing them and got the rights to make them. So uh, things have changed for Dolce Gabbana. But if you manage to get the OG formulas of pour homme and pour femme, pour femme was not called pour femme; it was just called Dolce Gabbana because it was their first perfume, Red Cap. If you smell those, like we're talking quality insane quality this it's a modern day synthetic now but we can't avoid the fact that synthetics are here to stay so synthetic perfumery is here to stay this is what's going to happen in the future from here on out you can't you know reminisce and cry too much about the past because <clears throat> we're never going to go back to those times certain ingredients are either illegal or certain companies have failed that used to make certain ingredients they don't you know the recipes of certain ingredients are also gone and so on and so forth so Synthetics are here to stay, and with them also the game. Like, what sort of, of perfume is going to be good at, in synthetic form and which isn't? How is it going to evolve? There's a lot to do there, and I think this one, in its very simple bubblegummy way, um, delivered something new. It delivered something new, something different, something refreshing, fun, whimsical, not too heavy. It's also not the cheapest teeny fragrance out there. You know, you want something like that, you're going to probably go, you know, buy Harajuku Girls or something like that from uh, Gwen Stefani. But this is a very, very clean, elegant floral after all of the trashiness subsides. And if you forget about, you know, the bottle. Now, some people have been t commenting on the bottle. They don't like the fact that the cap is glossy. The, the bottle is uh, transparent pink. And then the hands and the, the paws of the bear are a um, milky glass. I don't mind this mix and match of everything. I mean, even the box is a different shade of pink. It's like... I added a different shade of pink in the background. I'm dressed in pink. Like, there's so many different pink hues to this product uh, that I don't mind it having a, you know, that it's not all uniform. It's tacky that way. What I'm not a big fan of is this weird thing on his head, which I know is supposed to resemble almost like a Chanel Number no. 5 stopper. You see, it's a Plus Vendôme, kind of like a stopper of for a perfume. But to put that on the top of the head of the bear, eh... I don't know. You know, it looks very weird to me. I mean, are you supposed to hold it upside down? I wouldn't do it, but mm, it, they should have just kept his head like a regular head. I don't know. Like, I know what they're doing here. They want to give us like French perfumery moment, like as if that were the stopper on the top of his head. But yeah, I think that's kind of a fail in the design. That little tip on the head of the bear seems unnecessary kev says the cap seems unnecessary uh it does um also oh uh, kind of interesting to note when i was deciding which size of bottle to buy i decided to buy the 100 ml because i feel the proportions of the bottle are better are best in the 100 mil why am i saying this because if you go lower like 50 mil or 30 mil the proportion between the head of the bear and the size of the bottle, it's going to become really wonky. So like by the time you buy a 30 mil, the body of the bear is going to be tiny. The head is going to be huge and you're just going to lose those proportions. It's not going to look good anymore. It looks really off. 50 ml, still the head is too big for the bottle size. 100 ml nails at least 
the proportions. I think the ratio between the size of the head and the size of the body is is best in the hundred mil. So since I, you know, I thought to myself, well, if I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna buy the hundred mil. It, it didn't break the bank. It was not one of those, you know, as I said, it was around 50, 60 bucks. Uh, I got it um, off Amazon, actually. It was, uh, I got it as a deal on Amazon. So, um, and I think the hundred mil, like, was maybe like five dollars more expensive than the 50 mil like it was something really weird difference in price so i got the 100 mil and just to have in my archives because i think the bottle proportion wise is the best in this uh shape now let's see how the dry down is it's a little bit too early for the dry down perhaps but i did wear it uh, several days testing it out in preparation for this um review and i can tell you um it's fascinating because we are in this teeny room. Uh, we are the teenager. We are in this carefree life and everything is beautiful and innocent. This is not a nasty perfume. This doesn't smell of sexuality. It, it really smells of good, innocent times spent with, with your best friends or alone and just like, you know, daydreaming away about innocent things. You know, it's that kind of time where you're still kind of playing with toys, but you're becoming a teenager, but you're already going out having fun with your friends, but you're also still enjoying toys, you know, your Barbies or your Legos or what have you. And and it's soothing. It's not sweet. It doesn't overpower you. It makes you feel comfortable. And interestingly enough, what it also does to me, it satiates me because it smells of that particular type of bubble gum. And I don't, Usually when I chew bubblegum, um, I, I don't get hungry. <laughs> so it's a weird type of fragrance that actually doesn't make you crave food. So uh, is this kind of like a diet device of some sort? I don't know. I cannot say it because I'm no dietitian. So I cannot, I can only speculate and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Just my opinion, not rooted in any facts or truths. Um, you know, everything's alleged, but whenever I wear bubble gum by Moschino, I can go a whole day without eating. I'm just, I'm not hungry. You know, I have to like, when I wear this, I really have to force myself to eat because this thing is in a way overpowering. It, it satiates you. That could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing too. <laughs> hmm. And as it tones down, you know, it, it becomes more delicate. And the rose, um, with, with with the peach, they start blending. And the peach, because they give us peach blossom and the peach fruit. And of the peach fruit, they give us the peach skin, which is the fluffy part of the peach. You know, it's a particular type of smell. It's slightly fleshy. Um, but fleshy in combination with the candied dried fruits gives us that feeling of dewy and youthful. You know, it's not a dried fruit. It's a youthful sweet fruit. So it's not overly sweet because it's not dried out yet. It's youthful and dewy. So it smells fresh, youthful, you know. And by smelling fresh and youthful gives you a feeling of just being accomplished, fulfilled, you know, youthfulness. Everybody wants to be youthful, right? And so it's fun. It gives you good vibes. It makes you feel good. I think, you know, there are some perfumes sometimes where you think about them and you go like, you know, I want to feel like in a certain way. Certain Sometimes you just want to feel sophisticated and complicated. Sometimes you want to feel depressed. There are perfumes for that. But then there are those carefree moments when you just say, you know what? I just want to live in my bubble gum. I want to live in my own bubble. I want to be in my own cozy space where I, I don't let anything influence me from outside. Life is good. Maybe there's like, maybe the world is going to hell on the outside, but I'm going to create at least for as long as the perfume lasts, let's say for three or four hours. Ah, uh, well, no, actually it goes for longer on my skin, up to six hours. 
but I've heard people say that it doesn't last that long on them. But on me, it lasted up to six hours. So you, I'm in my cocoon for those six hours. I'm living my best life. I'm like, oh, yay. <laughs> Ditzy, girly, Paris Hilton vibes. Slebang. Yes. All that stuff, you know? So um, would I recommend it? Sure. If, if you uh, manage to find a cheaper, you know, because this one, there's always some deals available with this one. I would not buy it at full price. And um, if you get it on for a good deal, like, you know, 50, 60 bucks, yeah, I would get it. Because honestly, it's quite niche in its concept because there are a lot of bubblegum fragrances out there, but none of them really nail the smell of Hubba Bubba like this thing does. So, but because it's so special, I'm not sure this thing is going to have a lot of success. Which means it's probably not going to be in production for long. Which means you get it now, you enjoy it, and, uh, you know, it's going to probably get discontinued. Because it is quite niche in its nature. You know, this is not a mass product. So I also want to say props to Moschino for just daring to, to, to make something that is technically so simple, but in reality, it also delivers... Um, complexity, you know, because it's a concept that's not so easy. So anyway, I just wanted to say, live in ferret. It's a moment. <laughs> it's a vibe. <laughs> and I would recommend it if you get it for, for a good deal. Mm, delicious. So you're going to get three to six hours out of it. Projection, I mean, you can overspray this because as we've seen the sprayer, it's it's the atomizer really delivers a cloud and then you can kind of walk through it. I've tested it also on my hair because hair also transmits fragrances very intensely. So it's always a good, you know, and if you don't want the alcohol on your, on your hair, the, the trick to do is you spray it on your comb. You kind of wave the comb for a second, let the alcohol evaporate so it doesn't dry your hair. And then you comb your hair with the comb. So you get kind of just the um, the oils and the fragrance into your hair, minus most of the alcohol, in case, you don't, if, in case you're worried that your hair is going to dry out. But I don't care, so I just spray it on. And um, on the hair, it lasted like a day or two. You know, you, you still smell that rosy, jasmine-y type of moment, even though they don't list jasmine in there. But... It's very pleasant. And now that I've set all of this bubble situation up for me, the pink background, the pink outfit, I'm like looking at myself in the control monitor, like I'm feeling this pink vibe. And then on top of that, I I um I spray the perfume on. Now it, it it's it's even more intense because it's it's making me feel even more, you know, vibes, <laughs> the pink vibes, and I'm really loving it. So, it's an optimistic fragrance. It's a happy vibe fragrance. And if you're into that sort of happy, carefree vibe, not too pretentious, go for it. Go for it. Because also the bottle is cute. Minus this weird type of, you know, <laughs> wannabe French perfumery moment at the top. I mean, Moschino is an Italian brand. Euro Italia is an Italian perfume brand. Don't try to push the Frenchism on it. Eh? Just keep it Italian. Keep it tacky in a classy way and call it a day. So thank you, Jeremy Scott, for pushing the boundaries yet again. And uh, Mr. Pichot, well, you did terribly with one million, but you did good with bubblegum. So yes, I would recommend it. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you have bubblegum by Moschino? Toy 2. Such a stupid name, Toy 2. Do you love it? Do you hate it? Why do you love it? Why do you hate it? Let us know in the comment sections down below. And until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye. Subscribe.